Good evening and welcome to our talk show, My Democratic Pride. My name is Natkunda Phoebe. We are here to discuss civic engagement of the youth in the various democratic processes. Recently, we've been having an ongoing project with the Austrian Development Corporation about the, demo the democratic processes of the youth. We, had, uh, we engaged the youth in different regions, in Papuach, in Kampala, and today we have the privilege of bringing a guest from the Electoral Commission and I will let her explain, talk about herself. You're welcome. Thank you, Phoebe. Good evening, dear viewers. My name is Barbara Mlimida and I am the District Registrar, Kampala District. You're most welcome. Thank, Thank you so you. much for giving us the opportunity to be with us here, to talk to us, and we hope to hear from you and get our answers, our questions answered. Thank you. So, Madam Barbara, tell us what is the role and the mandate of the Electoral Commission to a youth out there who has not, you know, had the privilege to to have the civic engagement, and if they get the chance to watch us on the Faraja Digital TV, they would like to know what is your role, what is your mandate as the Electoral Commission. Thank you, Phoebe. As the Electoral Commission, we are mandated to conduct, supervise, and make sure that we have a free and fair elections and referendum in line with the Constitution of the Republic of Uganda. That is Article 61 of the Constitution of the Republic of Uganda. And we cannot achieve this if our stakeholders are not transparent, if our stakeholders are dishonest, if our stakeholders are not committed to move with us. Yes, please. So, Madam Barbara, tell us, uh, the youth out there, is there any way they can help in the supervision? Because, you know, the youth want to know that they are casting their vote and it's, it's going to be a free and fair election. Is there a chance that the Electoral Commission, you know, provides for these people to be able to supervise, to make sure that this is a free and fair election? Thank you, Phoebe. Our youths are always given the chance to participate in the Electoral Commission activities, and we always consider it a period of recruitment of ad hoc staff. These youths of ours apply and get enrolled with the EC as supervisors, sub-county supervisors, parish supervisors, and polling officials. So when they come and they work with us, they get more they get more knowledge about the elections. They get to know how to participate in these elections. And along along that, they get to know the do's and don'ts of elections. Yes. yes and I believe that above all, they get to know that, you know, we, through the whole supervision bit, when oh. they are brought on board, they get to know that the elections are free and fair. Yes. Please. Yes, because they're involved in the work. That's amazing. Yes. So tell us, how, you, as the Electoral Commission, how do you maintain your independence and impartiality? Maintaining our independence and, and the impartiality is through issuing equal guidelines to both our candidates and, and the voters. When you issue out a guideline, it will apply to both people. So when, uh, when, we, are, when we are inviting people to participate in our elections, we invite both party representatives and independents. Independents are those people without parties who don't have any party lineage. Mm. So when we like when we 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 charge a nomination fee to a flag bearer, it's the same nomination fee we charge to an independent person. All operations, right from registration to polling, are always equal. They always participate in the same activities and they follow the same guidelines. Yes. Okay. You've talked about the guidelines, like issuing the guidelines to the party bearers, to the independent. Yes. But um, would you want to explain to us, let me say during the election period, there is something as the youth, because we're having our engagements with the youth in Pakwaj, in Kampala, and then, you know, they get to talk about uh, why is it that during the, the, the whole electoral processes, when these people are trying to campaign, some party bearers are, you know, not not taken um how should i given let me is this special treatment 
you get okay for example where are more opposition leaders arrested compared to these other people is there something they're doing different is it that they're not following the guidelines or is it because there is some favor from the electoral commission to these party bearers phoebe that's not true please be informed that when it comes to participating in elections there are several stakeholders mm. and the electoral commission is part of them mm. so with us when it comes to elections we have the electoral commission we have the security we have the media we have political parties and uh, voters like members of, of the public all those are our stakeholders and you know electoral commission is one body electoral commission is one person you cannot be in all those areas mm. that some stakeholders misbehave out there is not a directive from the electoral commission yeah they do it on their own as those stakeholders as those independent stakeholders much as they are doing it inside our electoral activity mm. yes please. so you're trying to convince us that it is the different uh, stakeholders for example in this case security that is trying to do its work exactly and these people that are arrested there is a way they are diverting from the guidelines exactly okay so uh, miss barbara tell us about the challenges that uh, with the electoral commission has been there we've had elections for a while uh, tell us the challenges that you face as the electoral commission challenges are many mm -hmm. But the most persistent challenge that has haunted me to death is the misconception from the public. I don't know where the public gets their weird ideas. Weird ideas like um, like electoral commission using pens with the invisible ink. Eh? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> huh? Such misconceptions are really a challenge to us. You know, we can't be everywhere, but we try to educate our voters that that pen has never existed. It's only fictitious. Eh? We also have another challenge of late delivery of materials, especially like what happened in 2016, mm. where Kampala district, the nearest, the sitting district, had late delivery of polling materials. and uh, But we have been bettering our challenges, eh? Our challenges are a lesson to us, and the next time of elections, we always endeavor to better our performance. And uh, another challenge we had in the past was COVID. Before we get to COVID, um, mm. I want you to tell us now, now, for example, about the invisible pens. Yes. For you as the electoral commission, what are you doing about this? Because for the youth out there, they're still going to have that conception, that, that misconception. Mm. And you know it's going to affect your body. Mm. So what are you doing about it? Voter education. Mm. When I come to Phoebe and I tell her that there has never existed an, a pen with invisible ink, or electoral commission has never purchased such a pen. It will be your mandate. You'll help me to go and tell your fellow youths that electoral commission is not using pens with invisible ink. Mm. Yes, that electoral commission is using normal pens. And as if that's not enough, we even allow voters to come in with their own pens. Mm. If they have that misconception about us, it's okay, they can come with their own pens and use it to take ballot box, their ballot papers mm. and then slot them in the ballot boxes. Yes. Okay. Then also about the late delivery of materials. Uh, for, for the people out there, for the youth out there, how do you convince them that, you know, Kampala being the, the capital city? Yes. Uh, tell us how, like, how would you convince the, uh, the youth out there that, you know, these materials didn't come late because some ballot papers were being ticked or something. And how are you going to work on that in the upcoming elections? Come on, Phoebe. <laughs> I am asking materials for the youth cannot, out there. The materials cannot arrive late because of pre-ticking. And for your information, mm. when uh, materials arrive at a polling station, the ballot box in which they come is always put, opened and put upside down and shown mm. out to the public voters mm. or the public who may be around or near the polling station. So there is no pre-ticking of ballot papers. Mm. Unless that is a move predetermined and uh, preset by the 
people in that area. You know, I've told you, Electoral Commission cannot be everywhere, every time. Okay? Another challenge I was talking about was COVID. Yes, yes. You know what COVID did to us? Some people were deterred from, were banned from physical campaigning, and many of them had to use e-campaigning. Yes. Many candidates didn't afford that, the e-media, in order to relay out their messages to the voters. And it's mainly the rich candidates who, who, took, who took advantage of that system and they relayed, they relayed out their messages. So I had a feeling that our voters did not get all the messages from their respective candidates because they only used to hear from a few, not all of them. But Uganda being a prayerful country, I believe this time come 2026, we shall not have COVID and people will be allowed to participate in door-to-door -door campaigns because that is the most effective mode of campaigning. Yes. Yes. So you talked about, is it uh, uh, online voting, something like that? E-campaigning. E-campaigning. Yes, yes, it was e-campaigning. So do, don't you think, uh, when you talk about uh, e-campaigning, we are moving to the digital age. Mm. Are, are you as the electoral commission looking at it are you thinking about it the e-voting yes uganda is an a developing country yes and i believe we are not yet there you find some developed nations have not yet reached that level of e-voting e-voting is expensive and remember we are no longer receiving the donor funds like we used to. So with our mega resources, I don't believe we shall have e-voting in the near future. Yes, because we are still a developing country. Okay. Yes. So we should first be content with where we are now. And... Let's be contented with the physical voting. Okay. Yes, and try to better that system. Okay. Yes. So still about challenges. Mm. How how are you as electoral commission addressing the addressing the challenges that are faced by the marginalized group, the people with disabilities who cannot access uh, your, your voting centers. How are you working on that as the Electoral Commission? Electoral Commission, in the past we used not to deploy the aids of PWDs, mm. but this time I'm glad to inform our viewers that we are going to have sign language interpreters mm. come this, come 2026. We are going to have sign language interpreters and the uh, resources allowing. By the time we come to 2026, we may, in the case we get resources to buy the brain. Huh? Mm. As I mentioned, Uganda is still a developed country, I mean a developing country. So in case we get resources come 2026, we shall also be able to purchase the brain machines. and and uh, avail them to our blind voters. Also, uh, we have, um, we are trying to, to pick on conducive voting locations mm. for our PWDs, our people with disabilities. And in case, in case a voter comes when he has a disability, he's always given the first priority, mm. and he passes all the other people in the line, yeah. and they go straight to the the presiding officer and they get their ballot papers and they go ahead and exercise their right yes please okay uh also uh, about the we're talking about the challenges and how you're trying to address them you talked about voter education i want i want to know the youth out there want to know how are you as electoral commission making the voter education, the civic education, on their electoral rights, electoral processes, and all that. How are you making this happen? Thank you, Phoebe. Electoral Commission has gone ahead and hired civic educationists. It has gone ahead and hired the civic education agencies, and uh, these ones are helping us to relay out voter education messages to our voters. Also, the district election administrators, mm. like me and my colleagues, excuse me, are also going out to different places, markets, churches, 
and other gatherings like even these um circles and uh, even funerals even parties and we go out relaying voter messages to to our audiences our respective audiences yes please madam barbara do you feel like this is a uh effective do you feel like you are reaching majority of the youth there majority of the people there do you think everyone has access to this information from what uh, from the methods that you are using i believe so because look at the people who come to attend a funeral mm. Huh? Mm. assuming it's a funeral in Irukonjiri. yes mourners will come from kampala and all other parts of the world or the country mm come and attend that funeral. If I relayed a voter message at that funeral, I believe more than 70% of the attendants will receive that message. Okay, yes. so that is going to take me to, uh, you talked about you as the electoral commission are doing it and then having a, a voter education it's and all that. Oh. Have you as electoral commission put up initiatives to work with the C4 society organization, the media to enhance that, that, that voter education? We have organizations like Open Space, like Faraja, like a Youth Parliament, like National Youth Platform, and many other organizations. These, these, these organizations have always invited us to their seminars and workshops, and they have given us slots to address the participants. And this has really helped. Yes, okay. actually, in, in one of those, uh, those workshops, I got to meet my little friend called Joshua, and we have uh, always communicated. Whenever he has a, a question about elections, he gets in touch with me and we communicate. I believe he's a very good media piece that can relay messages to his fellow youths. Okay. Yes. So from what I get from what you said, you said that these uh, these organizations reach out to you people, the media. Oh. How have you as the electoral commission, because I believe that this is your responsibility as a body, yes. how have you people reached out to them? How you have reached out to them? Yes. Is you there know, any way you've helped them? Is there any way you've uh, m tried to make their work easy? I think that's what the youth want to know. In case, and you've talked about the organizations. Now they reach out to the spaces of uh, open space, to Faraja, to the youth parliament. Yes, they'll get this information. So now, apart from you people giving them this information, how have you, su how have you supported these organizations? Mm -hmm. How have you supported the media to better enhance? Electoral Commission has also occupied some e space on the media platforms. It's on Facebook, it's on Twitter, and uh, we also have some voter information on our website, which is freely accessible. Yes, I believe that's a good initiative given that we are going into the digital age, the youth have smartphones. I believe that's a good initiative from your side. Thank you. So, Miss Barbara, we are getting into uh, elections. We are getting into the season for elections. What should the youth expect from you as the Electoral Commission? Youths. The what, the youth should ex there. what the youth should expect. Yes. What I should expect from them. Please, let's first get to what they should expect, then what you expect from them. Our dear youths, expect an open electoral commission. Go to your nearest electoral commission representative. We have offices in all our districts, in all the districts in Uganda. There are 143. We have representatives in all sub-counties in Uganda. We have representatives in all parishes in Uganda. Kindly consult them in case you have any question about elections or you need to know anything about elections. We have, we have information on our website and it's freely accessible. www.ec.or.ug We have all our district election administrators who are open to the public. They relay their telephone numbers. Uh, our telephone numbers are on our website. Just feel free to give me a call. At least the, the youths I've met in these civil society workshops 
have all gone with my telephone numbers. Nice. And these days I'm receiving several concerns, several questions, several queries, several communications. The youths want to know when did demarcation end? How, how am I going to access the, the results of demarcation? How can I apply to be a work of the electoral commission? Different questions. I think that's quite questions. a step to, to see that the youth are reaching out to get involved in the process. Yes. yes, and I believe come to the real election time, I'm going to get elections like how do I get nominated? How do I get qualified to be nominated? Things like that, questions like that. Okay, yes. so what do you expect from the youth? I'm expecting a more peaceful and calm youth electorate. I'm expecting an informed electorate from the youths because at least we have been able to interact them with them on a, on a wider base. They are more informed, so they are not going to be as naive or as ignorant as they have been in the past, whereby these other elderly candidates would use them to misbehave and disrupt their competitors' activities. Yes. Okay. The youths are more informed this time. Okay. And I believe I'm going to have a more peaceful election come 2026. Speaking yes. about peaceful elections. Yes. You say the Electoral Commission is working with the security. Yes. The police, the oh. UPDF, the army and all that. Oh. How are you as the Electoral Commission? Yes, you're working. These people, these people are just, uh, they are an independent entity. Yes. But how are you as the uh, Electoral Commission that is fully in charge of the campaigns, of the electoral processes, how are you going to prevent from, uh, how are you going to prevent uh, the November incident from happening in the previous uh, killings where we saw people were being killed during the campaigns and all that. How are you as your body doing that? Are you engaging the security? Is there a way you are trying to talk to them? Is there edu voter education that is, you know, being given to the security department? Continuous voter education is what we are doing, is what we are extending to all our stakeholders. Mm. That is why when Electoral Commission found it uh, befitting, it got to know that the Electoral Commission as a body cannot reach out to all mm -hmm. our stakeholders. We decided to engage the civil society organization and other media platforms. But we always have a one-on-one -on -one with these security agencies and we tell them about our expectations. And we also share with them our guidelines. Remember, every Electoral Commission operates according to the rules and regulations designed by the parliament of uganda mm. so once in a while we engage our security agencies and other stakeholders and refresh them we we'll give them refresher courses about how to conduct oneself and how to treat others during the election period okay yes. so on, on on that how how which assurance do the youth have that as the electoral commission and your different stakeholders yeah. during the campaigns, during the entire electoral process, you are for them and not against them. Because as a youth, let me say, if I was traumatized during the, 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 those campaigns, yes. how am I going to, you know, how am I going to want to participate in the forthcoming ones? So which assurance are you giving the youth? When I tell you, Phoebe, when I appeal to you not to be violent, and not to listen to that elderly candidate who is deploying you during campaign time. And when I educate you about your rights as a voter, mm -hmm. I think come this time when that candidate invites you to be a member of his campaign, uh, um, his campaign team, mm -hmm. you'll get, you'll go there, you'll engage, you'll get engaged when you are an informed member. Should he tell you, Phoebe, it's time for violence, you'll have the right to tell him no. Violence does not help me. It is better I become peaceful and we carry on this campaign period up to the end. Up to the end. Okay. Yes. So also we've talked to the youth that are going to participate in the voting, that are going to participate in the voter, in the in the electoral processes. Mm. What about uh, what message do you have for the youth yes. that want to now be part be part of the leaders that want to come and you know be nominated, they want to come up and 
devoted what 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 do you have for them because you said you face various challenges and for you every challenge is a lesson learned so from the lessons that you've learned what don't you want the youth to get involved in what message do you have for them my dear youths come 2025 stroke 2026 kindly adhere to the following advice from me kindly mark Mark these dates. Third to the 25th of January is registration time. Make sure your name has, has been captured by our biometric voter registration system. Then, my dear youths, also check on your particulars on the National Voter Register come display time. And that time will be from the 18th of April to the 18th of April 2025 to the 8th of May 2025. Also, my dear voters, those who will not wish to stand up to stand for, for, for nomination or to be elected, kindly turn up to vote in this period between the 12th of January 2026 and the 9th of Feb 2026. Those three periods are very, very important to my youths. If you don't participate in them, then please don't blame the Electoral Commission for being partial, for being inhuman, for being everything that you always label us with. And above all, my dear youths, I love you very much because you are the future of today. Okay. Thank you, Miss Barbara. So also, we have... Uh, we have we have youth that are looking forward to voting for the very first time. We have first time voters. Yes. What what message do you have for them? What what do you want them to prepare ahead of the elections? What should they have so that they do not miss out? Because there is being out there and you are prepared to vote, but then you do not have the required documents, you do not meet the required age. Tell us about that. For one to be considered a voter. First thing, you should be a citizen of Uganda. Second thing, you should be 18 years and above. My, my dear viewers, please mark this. NIRA is the one that registers voters. And it registers people from 16 years. However, Electoral Commission considers people aged 18 and above. So don't go to the um, to be registered when you are 16 during uh, sixth, that period from the 6th of January to the 25th and say, when you are 16 and then think you are going to be a voter in 2026. You will not have turned 18, but NIRA has captured that data for other planning purposes. Yeah. Remember the data captured by NIRA is being used by all the government agencies, planners, Ministry of Health, UBOS, and all other government agencies. So electoral commission, for electoral commission purposes, we only consider people aged 18 years and above. And um, basically those are the two. You should be 18 and a citizen of Uganda. Then also enroll for registration at the nearest biometric voter registration system mm -hmm. that Mira will have brought nearest to you. Then the rest will move in place. Okay. Yes. Thank you so much, Miss Barbara, for that insightful discussion. Uh, any parting shots for the youth out there, for our viewers? My dear youths, peace during elections is all I preach. Peace during elections is my appeal to you. And also, endeavor to check on your particulars during the display period, because that is the only time that you'll get that for you to inform the Electoral Commission that you are omitted from the initial registration. Otherwise, we don't need national ID, we don't need anything. Those are simply aids. The only authenticated document on polling day is the National Voters Register. The youths are always lied to that if you don't have Ndangamuntu, you will not be allowed to vote. That is not true. 
The only authenticated document on polling day that we always refer to is the National Voters Register, and it always comes in the ballot box where the voting materials are always packed. I thank you very much. Thank you so much, Ms. Barbara, for giving us your time. To our dear viewers out there, to the youth out there, I believe that this has been such an insightful discussion. You know what you need when you are going to vote. You know what requirements you need. And then we know that the Electoral Commission is for us and not against us. So we should not try to fight them. She has talked about uh, peaceful uh, campaigns, peaceful uh, electoral processes. Let us adhere to that. Let us be obedient citizens and let us work with them. Thank you so much for tuning in. Have a blessed evening. Thank you.